What's up, players? Welcome to Sims Tennis. We've got another racket review for you. This one was surprising for me, and I'm actually considering a switch to this racket. We'll get back to that later, but for now, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. I love this game, and I might love the gear just as much, so I appreciate you guys allowing me to share my passions with you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, and it would be greatly appreciated. All right, so here it is, the new VCore 98. Let's start by checking the specs and the quality control. All right, so the VCore 98 should have a static weight of 305 grams. And you'll see here we end up with a static weight of 304.4 grams. So just a smidge under spec there. As we move on to get the balance, we should have a 315 millimeter balance, which is pretty standard for a racket of this category. And we end up with a 314 millimeter balance. So again, pretty close to spec. So lastly, we're going to get the swing weight. Since the racket is just a little bit underweight and a little bit more head light than it should be, we're going to go ahead and anticipate the swing weight to come in a little lower than that 288 number. And you'll see, in fact, we do get a number of 284. So we're just going to go ahead and double check that. And then we're going to get this thing strung up and come back to get the strong specs. All right, so we're back. We've got it strung. I've got Tennis Warehouse's listed specs there on the third row in red. It should have a static weight of 323 grams. And we measure a static weight of 321.8 grams for this racket. The balance of the racket should be 325 millimeters. When the racket was unstrung, the balance point was just a millimeter lower than it should have been. And as we get the balance point here, it remains that way and is at 324 millimeters. As we move on to get the swing weight, um, when it was unstrung, we were four swing weight points below what we expected. And you'll see here with it strung, it remains that way. And so it looks like everything is consistent across the board here in the strung and unstrung specs. Okay, so let's just write that down and then we'll take it out and see how it plays. As we move on to the play test, let's talk about the changes that have been made to the racket. They've redesigned the throat of the racket. They have added back a half millimeter of beam thickness up at the 12 o'clock position. And they have also widened the hitting area up there, which really accentuates that isometric head shape. I have some history with that last version as I played with it for the majority of the year in 2022. I switched to the racket after moving on from the V-Core 95. I was looking for just a little bit more forgiveness and that racket afforded me that. I really like that last version on returns and on my backhand side where my swings are shorter and flatter. The muted response felt pretty good on those shots as it felt as if the ball was dwelling on the strings just a bit longer and gave me more perceived control. On serves, that last version was very solid. Nothing stood out in a good or a bad way. But on my forehand, which is a much longer and faster stroke than my backhands or returns, that muted feel gave me a muddy response. I couldn't always tell where in the string bed I was connecting with the ball, so I never really felt connected on that side and eventually moved on to the Extreme Tour. This 2023 version was a much more well-rounded experience for me. I don't quite get that same feeling on the backhand side as if the ball is really sinking into the strings and has that extra dwell time, but backhands were still really solid with this racket. It offers enough power to get good depth and enough control to inspire confidence. Hitting forehands with this racket were a significant improvement over the last version. I still don't feel the most connected when I really lengthen out my swing and go for that 90% and above shot, but the racket feels really good and responsive with any shot besides that one. It is still a bit on the muted side, but I think Yonex has done a good job refining it with this generation. For me, it feels like a good mix of a classic low flex, thin beam player stick mixed with a modern power and spin frame. You'll find the launch angle and the spin of these modern frames with a softer response. Moving on to volleys. Volleys with this racket were a significant improvement as well. It feels more crisp and connected than the last version and is also more stable. It also has a nice maneuverable feel. So overall, I really appreciated this racket at net.
similar to the last version, serves with this racket were really solid. Flat serves had plenty of power on tap and enough control to encourage you to hit them. Slices were moving well, and second serves had plenty of kick. The open upper portion of the racket seemed to help with both stability and spin in the serve department, so I may even give this racket a slight edge over the last one. Returns with this racket were nice as well. The slightly muted and soft feel encouraged a short take back, and I still felt good compression of the ball on the strings when making those shorter swings. There was good access to pace and depth on those shots, and I also enjoyed the stability and forgiveness that that upper hoop was providing me. All right, so who's this racket for? Overall, this is a good all-around racket for intermediate to advanced all-court players. Players looking for good power and good spin who want something with a softer response would be pleased with this offering. I personally am considering a switch to this racket because it gives me the power, spin, and flex at impact I like without having to overswing to get it. All right, so that's all for the review. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to embrace the grind.